everyone, what's up? It's Francesca here from Small City Plants. And today, well, today for me, probably quite a while in the future for you, I am gonna begin the multi-week journey of putting together my new Millsville Ikea greenhouse cabinet. I am so excited to have this. So the Millsbo cabinet is probably one of the most popular Ikea greenhouse cabinets out there. It's super stunning and it's expensive. It's not one that I was planning on getting. I was maybe thinking of investing in a Rudsta in the future, but for those of you who don't know, Ikea has an as is section and you can sometimes see things online on the website and they had a Millsbo tall in their as is section. And the as is section, it's not supposed to be heavily damaged. It's often just a scratch, which this one just had a scratch on the side of the cabinet. And I got it for, I kid you not, 160 Canadian dollars instead of 300. So, I mean, you can't say no to that, right? That's even cheaper than the Rudsta is. So I am going to start putting it together. I say this is gonna be a multi-week process because I wanna take my time, I wanna build it, I wanna see, like actually get a sense of the space and see what shelves I want, what accessories I want. So you'll be joining me multiple times over the course of the weeks as I start getting this set up. Today, I'm gonna to start by building it. Now, my toxic trait is that even when Ikea says it needs at least two people to build it, I am always confident I can build it by myself. I have built beds, desks and chairs are easy, but I have built bed frames, I have built bookcases, everything by myself. And I'm sure I can do that with this one too, right? Right, please? So I'm gonna be putting that together. We'll see if I need to stop and get my husband's help at some point, we will see. But uh, cause it is made of glass, I'm gonna be careful, but let's just get started. Shout out to the Uber driver who helped get this in his car so I could bring it home. You're a real one. Fun fact, for those of you that don't know, you should always try and put together IKEA furniture on top of something like a rug. Uh, it helps prevent scratches to your floor, to your furnishings, and to the furniture.
All right, folks, so we are pretty much at the stage where the book says two people. Now, I am one person. The two people picture has never stopped me before. I'm gonna see what I can do.
Okay, so I have finished putting together the cabinet. I knew one person could do it. And I just wanna show you the damage that cut this by like 50% off. Do you see that tiny scratch right there? That is what cut this by 50% off. So you know, have faith in those sales sections, people. Anyway, I'm gonna clean this up, move it to where I want it to be, and then I will be back with you when I start considering shelves, wiring, lighting, and all of that. Be back in a sec. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'd love to say this is like, this is the next day, or this is two days later. I think we're looking at about six weeks from when I filmed the first half of this video, putting together the cabinet. If it sounds echoey, it's because I'm in my plant room slash office. You can see I have my other plant shelf behind me and a giant mess in the corner with like my yoga stuff and just don't judge, don't judge. It's a little bit of a mess. But I've moved the cabinet in here and I it has taken this long because I've wanted to get everything together. I've got fans, I've got lights, and you can see in here I haven't set them up yet, but I also have shelves. So uh, I ordered some more shelves. If you watch my Bagabo Greenhouse uh, update video, I use clear shelves um, that you can get in Canada from Plantool. And my mom's calling. Okay, my mom called. I totally forget where I was at. Uh, but yeah, I had to wait for the shelves to come in. Uh, I have everything here and I just want to get this cabinet set up. Like, I'm so happy I finally have this Mills bow and I need to get some plants in here. So let's get started. So first off, these are the shelves that I got. So as I said, they're from Plantal Support. They're the same ones I got for the bag of bow. And um, they were wonderful to work with, came in about five weeks. Um, the first delivery, this shelf, uh, it arrived broken. I reached out to them and I got it two business days later replaced. So they were absolutely fantastic with that. I don't know how the first one snapped, but it did. And this one seems to be in great condition. And if it looks m like dirty or musty, it is because it has a film on it to protect it so it remains clear. So I'm going to peel it off. So I have this one, which is the wide shelf, and I'll show you now before it gets in, because it's always hard to show when you're actually in the cabinet, um, but it has a few things. So it has vents. This is also three eighths of an inch thick or something. It's the thicker of the two versions. I'll make sure I write down like the thickness and all of that. But what's great about it is at the sides here, there are little, hooks like little cutouts and that is for cables to get run through so it's much easier for cable management so I got one of these wide ones full shelves and then I got four corner shelves so let's take the plastic off all of them Okay, so as you can see, the shelves are now completely clear. They all look in great condition. The large one did have a bit of a scratch on the front, but it's not that big a deal and it's not deep. So I'm happy. Um, let's face it, they're gonna get a couple marks in here anyway. So this is my beautiful cabinet. Now, what I'm thinking here is I wanna have these two kind of at the top. I wanna basically have two corners, a full, and then two corners. And it might be too many shelves, but I can play with it. The biggest thing is though, 
I wanted some extra security. So what I actually also ordered from Plantle Support are some extended shelf supports for this cabinet. So the Ikea Mills bow has these little attachments that you use for your sh to like place the glass shelves on, but they're pretty thin. Like it's just balancing on a small amount of shelves. So Plantle Support also makes these extended ones. So these are 3D printed. And I am just going to attach these in the middle so that this long shelf has a little bit more space, like a little bit more support, because I want it to be really sturdy. I think that looks good. So let me bring you, let me bring you in. So you can really see here the difference between the two, uh, the two different kinds of supports. So this is the Ikea support for normal shelf and these are the extended ones from Plantel support. So I think having these is gonna be really great. I'm working in such a small space here. Can't believe I'm working on these conditions. So, let's start with this big shelf. So as you can see, there's one little scratch that I mentioned there, but it's barely noticeable. Uh, and I'm just going to slide in the shelf. And that looks really good. I like that. Now what they also provided is a whole bunch of little um, zip ties. Uh, and there's some extra holes in here so I can zip tie the shelf to the extenders and I'm gonna do that right now.
right, I had to take a break because it got very hot in my plant room and my camera overheated and the zip ties kept falling. So let me just show you what I did. All right, so here's the cabinet. Let me open her up. So this middle shelf here is zip tied on to these extenders. And I put the two corner shelves at the top and at the bottom. Now they're currently in a butterfly position, um, but you can order a butterfly kind of shaped shelf. You can order a specific one. The reason that I went for two triangles instead is that it gives me more flexibility if my plants down here grow really tall and start to hit this, I can remove this shelf. So it just gives me a little bit more flexibility and that's really what I want in the long run. <clears throat> So at the top, in this cabinet, I am using Barina, no, Monios T8 Grow Lights. Uh, so I've attached them in a couple different ways. At the top, I have used the attachment that comes with it with a magnet. So this is very secure. And then down on this shelf, you can see I have another grow light underneath, but I have attached it using zip ties and hooks. So very easy. I purposefully use kind of clips underneath here to attach to the zip tie because if I ever want to change the grow light if it ever if I ever want to switch it out for a week or one I can do that really easily just by unclipping it and without having to cut the zip tie which is always frustrating so this is a little bit of a mess I gotta clean up these zip ties a little bit down here but I have two fans AC infinity 120 millimeter fans this one is attached with magnet hooks at the back there. And then down here, I have them daisy chained. So they connect down here, behind here they connect. Uh, and this one's attached with zip ties. Now I'm not a huge fan of how this looks. I am most likely gonna change that at a later time. But for now, I think that works okay. Um, this cable behind here I actually am going to kind of move out the way. There. So that's actually from my internet boxes, which are up on top of the cabinet. So again, this left side looks a little messy with the fans, but that is going to be mostly hidden by the plants. Now let me turn this on for you and show you how the lights look. Look how beautiful and bright that is. This is perfect. This is exactly what I want. And now I think it's time to start filling this up with plants. No, there's something I need to do first. I knew I would forget this. Let me turn the lights off so I'm not too backlit. <clears throat> now, part of having a greenhouse cabinet is for humidity. Now, I don't specifically have this for humidity, although the humidity is an added bonus in the Canadian winters because it gets really, really dry in here. Um, but yes, I, I have this really to keep my plants in a pretty place and away from my cats, uh, easier to manage and just more space. I just like it. That being said, I am going to maximize a little bit humidity. I'm going to weather strip it a little bit. Uh, you can go all out with weather stripping. I'm sure there are tons of videos out there. You could weather strip this entire thing. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to weather strip the front of the doors. And then at the top, I believe there are a couple holes and I'm going to use weather strip tape to just tape those holes closed. And I think once I fill it with plants, that should get it to like a comfortable steady 60 to 70 percent humidity that's usually not hard to achieve and that's where I like to sit a lot of people aim for like 85 to 95 percent humidity I don't need that I'm good without it 60 percent is fine for me in the winter 70 in the summer is perfect so to weather strip <laughs> I have clear v-shaped weather stripping that um, I either picked it up on Amazon or got it from Canadian Tire. It's really not difficult to get. If you're in Canada, before you order anything on Amazon, price check it at Canadian Tire, because I swear Canadian Tire is cheaper half the time. So here it is. So it's just V-shaped plastic 
you fold it and it works as well you don't actually fold it you just kind of tape it on and it acts as like a seal so I'm just going to cut it to size and stick it on And yes, I am doing the woman measurement where I have a tape measure, I have several, but why use that when you can just use your arms and go like this and <laughs> it works, it's fine. one set of weather stripping done so if I close this door first and then this it is sealed up completely in here so that's one but there are a couple other points I want to hit weather stripping done I have weather stripped on the insides of each of the doors I have weather stripped between the doors and I have covered the holes at the back uh, I think those are the main places that I could see like mass humidity exodus um but if you like i said if you really want to weather strip this 100 percent fully i'd go check out another video on that because i do know that some people recommend weather stripping before you even put this together like as you're doing it but as i said we're not that intense about it here i'm so excited okay i was like debating i'm like should i put plants in tonight should i not and you know what i've been waiting for this for like six weeks Let's put some plants in. This is not gonna be the final of what ends up in here, but it's a start. Maybe an important thing to note is that uh, I do have a light meter on my phone. I recommend trying one if you don't have one. They're not 100% accurate, but they're not bad. So when I measured the light in here, uh, the light at the bottom was the strongest, uh, understandably, because it has both the light at the top and the light at the bottom keeping it like really bright. However, that is gonna change with some plants in here, so I'm gonna take some readings along the way as well. My beautiful chicken farm was in bloom and she will be again soon. Love this plant. I'm going to put my Kodata Sumatra down at the bottom because I think it's going to get nice and sun stressed. Similarly, my Hoya Gunungading and my Forbes EI. Is this just going to be my weird Hoya cabinet? As you might have seen in one of my recent videos, my Hoya Flores Island has been struggling a little bit lately and chopped her up and put her in here and I think she needs to go back into a cabinet. I don't talk about this plant as much as I maybe should because it's one of my favorites, but I have a watermelon deshidia and I have you ever seen a watermelon Dachydia sunstress? It turns like this gorgeous pink, so in the cabinet. I'm also going to put my little Hushkiliana farm in here. Not sure about the regular one yet, but definitely my two variegated versions. I also feel like my elliptica could use a little bit of love, a little bit of TLC. It's been in this container. It's been all right, but it used to be like this stunning plant. It is actively growing. Maybe it just needed a break after a repot, but in the cabinet. All right, I have decided that I want my Kaimuki in here because if you don't know, my Kaimuki had uh, 
root mealies ages ago is treated and fine now and finally starting to grow. She needs a trellis, but I know she'd grow better with the extra heat. So far, every single plant in this cabinet is in pond, but I'm gonna put in one that's in soil because I think I'm even gonna transfer it to pond at some point. I got this Finlaysonii recently and its roots were rotted and I need to give it some love. So let's put her in the cabinet and then I think I'll continue. I think I might do a video soon where I repot her. my Callistophila and my Kaodang Vietnam. My Callistophila is putting out a death bloom. For those of you who aren't sure what a death bloom is, it means she's really unhappy and stressed and hasn't put out any new growth, but has put out a bloom, usually because they think they're gonna die but we can still save her. She still has plenty of places to grow from. We just gotta convince her. Another one I'm gonna put in here, which I don't actually think I've shown before. I filmed, the reason I haven't posted my last two videos is because my camera, like there's this whole issue and I was just like, right, I, mentally I need a break. I can't deal with this right now. And in that video, I was actually showing off this new plant, which is a Hoya soy daoensis. Soy daoensis. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's right. I looked it up. Um, this is really pretty plant. It has like fuzzy, oh, not fuzzy, but the leaves are somewhere between a Bertonia and a Codata. Like they're like rough but soft. It's a very interesting texture, and it is like in the family of Hoyas which would be able to be hybridized with like a codata or um, other types, uh, which are just escaping my mind right now. Flagellata, uh, like there's several in that kind of family, so it gives out fluffy blooms. I'm gonna throw in my Hoya Crassi Petulata Splash, and I do wanna say that this has been going fine in household conditions. Um, like, do not take any of this as you can't grow it in household conditions. Some are from my other greenhouse, which is too packed. Some are from my shelves, which are too packed. Um, so it grows fine, but most Hoyas will do better with extra heat and humidity. Not all, but most. Uh, so I think I'm gonna put it in there, clean up my shelf a little bit, and let her grow really splashy and beautiful in here. If I'm gonna do that, then I may as well put in my Nova Ghost too. It's my most silvery Hoya I own. Now these are propagations right now, but they're almost ready to be fully potted up, and I know it's gonna do better in the greenhouse. This is my Hoya McGilvrii. The leaves look a little sick, that's why it was cut up, it had root rot. We're dealing with it, we're dealing with it. Now, there are several other Hoyas that I would want to put in here eventually, but uh, I have some plant shopping planned, so I'm gonna leave it kind of sparse for now. But this has freed up so much space on my other shelves. I'm so happy about it. And in my other greenhouse, this is really what I needed. It's super sparse right now, but a lot more to come. Let me give you just a little overview. So as you can see, yeah, the top is really sparse. I think this is gonna be cute with the Deschidia and the two um, hmm, Hutchkiliana trailing. I think that's gonna be really pretty. Uh, down here, I have my Kaimuki. I haven't found that the Kaimuki or the Gilvrii are like super light and needy, but I have found them to be a little bit more humidity needy. So I think they'll do well in here. 
You can see how sick my McGillivray eye looks now. Oh, poor guy. Uh, my Nova Ghost, it likes some light, but not tons. It will revert in a lot of light, fun fact. Uh, this one I'm gonna move around as well. Crassy Petulata, I'm not happy with where this is right now. It'll probably move to this shelf and get a large trellis in the middle, like a, like a showpiece. And I gotta find some to put up here, more like trailers. Maybe I'll move my, my Lee in, or um, I, my Linearis is too long. I gotta find some other plants to kind of trail off here. Now down at the bottom, I'm really excited about. So down here, I guess it's like my weird dumpstery kind of Hoyas. So like my Gunungadding, Callistophila, Elliptica. I'm not sure if she'll live in there long term, but my Espiace, Chicken Farm, Codata Sumatra, uh, Flores Island, Forbesii, Finlaysoniae, and Soidawensis. Uh, and again, this is might change a bit, but I think that this is a really bright light here. So I think this is gonna be really good for sun stressing these kind of Hoyas. Um, yeah, I think this is gonna be perfect. So overall, lots to fill, but I think that's looking great. So I think I'm gonna leave this one here. I have to have a shower, get ready for work tomorrow. It is a weeknight, I am tired, but I think this is looking pretty good. Lots of more work to be done, um, but I'll continue to check in and update you on how things are looking, how humidity is, how things are growing, if they're sun stressing, if they're not. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. You can also hit subscribe. I will be posting videos at least once a week for all of 2023. And I hope you join me for the updates, learn more about my plants. I know this is really focused on Hoya, but I have a lot more <laughs> and more coming that I will be sure to share with you. All right, that's it, but have a wonderful day. Bye.